far below the city streets crawling with vermin are the sewers, and you'll find out how to make them today on Dungeon Craft. So today we're going to make a pair of dungeon sewer tiles. One is a corner piece, the other is a straight piece. The backing material is a laminate floor tile sample. They're available at any large hardware store chain. They are 4x4 four four inches, which means each will make one tile. These modular pieces are very versatile and can be quickly reconfigured in any number of ways. You'll want to make more straight tiles than corner tiles. I would say two straight tiles for every one corner tile that you make. The surface will be made out of styrofoam foam board. You'll want to purchase it from a dollar store because it's poorly made so the backing paper peels easily off, revealing the styrofoam underneath. Use a ballpoint pen to draw out a 4 inch by 4 inch grid and cut it with an X-Acto knife and a metal ruler. We always use a metal ruler because with a wooden ruler, if there's slippage, it could cut through the wood and into our fingers. I grid the surface into 1 inch squares. Not everybody likes a gridded look, but it's going to match with the rest of my dungeon pieces. I usually do the grid first in pencil and then go over it with a ballpoint pen. The thicker the ballpoint, the better it works. I shade in the parts that I'm going to remove just so I don't get confused. You can see it's got an elbow shape here. And I do the same to the straight passage. I cut along the mortar lines with my X-Acto knife and then gently remove the pieces that I'm not going to use. On the corner, hold down the tip of the corner with your finger. If you notice the edges are lined with bricks and I just draw those in with a ruler and a ballpoint pen. Then I draw a mortar line in just guesstimating where I think a brick would go. Now you have a choice to make when, with how you glue it to the floor tile sample. If you glue it to the black side you can make a double sided dungeon tile. Although I usually glue it to the wood side because it helps distinguish these tiles from the other ones in the box that I keep them in but it's entirely up to you. Use your hot glue gun to secure the styrofoam to the vinyl. I use my soldering tool to go over the mortar lines again. If you don't have a soldering tool, another great tool is a fine tip Sharpie marker. Sharpies will actually melt the styrofoam. If you do use a soldering tool, make sure you use a metal ruler so you don't burn yourself. I'm barely touching the mortar lines with the tool because it melts quickly. I also use the tool to bevel the edges on the corners. If you should accidentally make a mistake and melt away too much foam, that's okay. It's supposed to be a sewer system. Here where my hand slipped, it'll look like the bricks just broke away. You can also use the tool to put some scrapes and gouges and pockmarks in the surface. Crumple a ball of aluminum foil and stamp it on the entire surface to create a stone texture. For my base coat, I use cheap acrylic craft paint. This is black with a little white mixed in, so it's really a dark gray. I let these bake out in the 90 degree August sun for about 10 minutes. Wait till your surface is completely dry before moving to the next step. Use a flat medium width brush, put it in some dark gray paint, and wipe the paint off on a paper towel. Gently drag the brush over the surface. This is known as dry brushing. The paint will only come off on the highest raised surfaces, creating a stone look. I deliberately haven't sped up the film here so you can get a sense of how long it takes to do this, which is really not long at all. And I'll just brush in different directions until it just looks right to my eyes. Without washing the brush, I use a lighter color gray. Again, wipe it off on the paper towel and go over the whole surface again. At first, I don't press too hard. It's a very light touch because I don't want too much pigment coming off on the surface. As more and more paint comes off, I use faster and harder strokes. Make sure you don't forget the sides. If you like a darker stone look, you can stop right here. Otherwise, you can dip it in white. Again, don't wash the brush. Same brush. And do it once again. Pay particular attention to the edges. Water I use 
two different colors. One is an olive green and the other is a lighter yellow green called Lush Foliage. Use the olive green first and completely cover the surface. Without washing the brush, just wiping off on a paper towel, I moved to the Lush Foliage, painting along the sides closest to the bricks. While the paint is still wet, I pull it toward the center a little bit and I blend it with the darker green. I take a piece of damp kitchen sponge and I tap it into the light green paint. It's key that the sponge is damp. Then I just pat it in the center, like so. Now it's time to do the water effects. Many crafters use resin to create water and it looks outstanding. But there's a few problems with resin. I'm not an expert in resin. I know you have to pour it, you have to set it, you have to mix it properly, you have to pop all the bubbles, and it can be heavy and easily breakable. Also, to be honest with you, I am lazy. I like fast, cheap results, so I use silicone caulk. I found this clear caulk in the plumbing aisle of the hardware store. It costs about 4 or $5. Just cut the tube and squeeze. Smooth it out with a popsicle stick or a piece of craft wood, whatever you have handy. You can see a little bit of a difference between the water and these two different tiles made at two different times. That's because for the latest one I used this, this clear caulk that I haven't used before. I paint the entire surface with white glue. This will form a protective shell. One interesting development are these little bubbles that you can see at the surface. Um, I don't think that's a problem though, I think it looks kind of cool. You can also add little bits of debris or wood sticks or skeleton bones. Just drop the debris in while the caulk is still drying. The final step is to seal the glue with a couple of coats of flat enamel spray lacquer. Wait 10 minutes to dry, add some giant rats, and your sewers are ready for adventure. Vermin, were-rats, smugglers, cultists, who knows what evil lurks in the sewers. Now you know how to make them. If you found this video helpful, give it the big thumbs up. If you have questions or comments, put them below. Subscribe for more great Dungeon Craft videos and share this video with your friends. This is Professor Dungeon Master for Dungeon Craft. Thanks for watching. I'll see you at the table. And may all your future roles be natural 20s.